So, so on declaration dates, the journal entry will look like this. There's really just three entries, to, two entries to this. Even though there are three dates that relates to dividends, the first date while the company issues declares the dividends. They haven't actually gave away the stock, haven't actually gave away the cash dividends, but they just declare it. Then what happens is we will record and reduce the retained earnings, and also dividends payable will be credited. Okay, now on the date of data record, this basically just a uh, company decides who are the creditors, uh, the shareholders that gets the dividends, so there's no journal entry to the second date. Third date, when company actually pays out the dividends, then they use as cash at the same time. Okay, so there are really two ways to do dividends. In the first four chapters, we talked about giving away dividends, just debit dividends account, credit cash. So this is one way to do it. This is when, when it comes to the payment date. Um, instead of having the first journal entry having a dividends payable account, some of the companies, they just do a debit retain earnings. I'm sorry. They just do, at the end, the dividends and credit cash. Okay, but some of the companies in the beginning, they would do directly reduce retain earnings and create a dividends payable liability account. Okay, earlier I talked about this is one way to do it. Other companies, sometimes they do it this way. They have one journal entry and a declaration date, and then one, another journal entry here when it actually comes to payment. So you see this as a dividends li payable liability reduction because earlier there was a dividends payable um, created while well, the company declares the dividends. Okay, so some companies just do one journal entry when it comes to payment date. This is the third one. Other companies, they may do two of them. So there are two different cases. In the book, you will see a footnote stating that, um, in this chapter in the footnote, stating that there's some of the companies that does it this way. Some company does two transactions. So if it's a two transaction way, the first one will be declaring dividends but not giving it out yet. So it's considered a liability that the um, company owes to shareholders. So then when it reaches actually paying it out, it will be reducing the liability. Now, earlier I talked about there are different types of shares. So there's preferred shareholders, there's common stock shareholders, and how we determine the dividends is a little different. Okay. So this part, this example here directly tells you that we're declaring 6,000, we're giving away 6,000. Now, some of the problems we need to determine which part goes into preferred shareholders, preferred shareholders' pocket, which part goes into common shareholders' pocket. So how to determine dividends? Earlier on, the equity section, I told you there's a percentage to it. The percentage is not interest rate, but it's a dividend rate. So for preferred shareholders, there's two ways to determine it. Usually, company in the beginning, they will set a dividend percentage. So in this example, 8%. That basically means 8% of the face value of the share. So in this example, if the face value of the for a preferred stock is $100, for example, 8% of dividends rate will be given to you. And if the company altogether issued 2,000 shares, and that basically means preferred shareholders has the right to receive $16,000 of whatever the declaration of the dividend is. Okay, once again, if it's based on percent of par value, then the problem will tell you what is the percentage, the dividends rate. They use the dividend raise times face value, which also will be given to you, and times the total number of shares that company issued out to the public. So meaning that if I own one share of preferred stock, which worth face value is $100, and I'm getting $8 as my dividend. If I own two shares, I'm getting $16, because it's 8% of the face value that I have. So in company's perspective, they're giving away 8% of the total shares that they issued out to the public. Okay, so this is one way to determine a dividend rate. Another way is, would be just a flat rate of dollar amount. So meaning for each share, the shareholder is getting $3. So then if I have one share, I'm getting $3. I have two shares, I'm getting $6. It's not based on percentages of face value, but just a fixed dollar amount. 
So companies can decide whichever way to do it. This is just a way to calculate what is the fund that shareholders is getting. Okay, now as to common shareholders, oftentimes it's just the second one. Preferred shareholders usually has a dividend rate. Common shareholders usually just a flat dollar amount. Could be one dollar to each share that a common shareholder has. Okay, and then for most of the problems, you would see that preferred shareholders will be receiving a lot more than common shareholders. Okay. 